and took where Namibia clinched a fourth straight title in Africa's Premier Rugby competition. Today, the hunt for another title in the Rugby Africa Gold Cup begins for the defending champions with the clash against the rugby cranes from Uganda. But more importantly, it's the journey to the land of the rising sun that the six teams are most interested in. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the capital of Namibia. It is a marvellous winter's day in Vintuk. It's sunny, it's not too hot, and there's a very excited crowd here to witness the first game for these two nations in the 2018 Rugby Africa Gold Cup. With me this afternoon is Namibian rugby legend Jacques Berger. Jacques, this is what all the hard work has been all about. It's all about this first match for these two teams. Good afternoon, Johan. Yes, exactly. That's what we've all been waiting for. A lot of hard work and preparations have gone into this one. And great to see these two nations standing there. The boys are ready for war. And uh, you know what? The World Cup's not that far away. And, and I think there's a lot of boys out there standing, dreaming to be in the next year's World Cup. And they'll put their whole everything into this game today and make sure they put their country one step closer to that. And the way that this tournament is set up, you really have to win every single game to be guaranteed an opportunity to go to the World Cup. So both of these two teams will be treating this game as a must-win clash. Always interesting to see who the coaches go up first with. And Uganda have left out six players that played recently in that Elgin Cup game and that defeat against Kenya, but still a very experienced team being led out by Asuman Mogherwa in the number three jersey. Aaron Ofoyworth is definitely one of the five players to watch, and he will be in that number nine jersey. Plenty of experience on the bench for Uganda as well. Joseph Tamala, Adnan Mutebi, and Colin Kumbowa, the replacement front rower for Uganda. For Namibia, Phil Davies, the coach, and naming Johan Dessel, the captain, as the experienced center, leads out the side for the first time. Also a very special game for Cressandra Buerta, playing in his 50th cap for Namibia, and that will be a great moment for him. Plenty of firepower up front as well, Jock. A lot of firepower, I've got to say congratulations to Cressandra Buerta. It's been a great seven for Namibian rugby. But yeah, like you said, Pack of Forge will definitely be the area where they'll start and try to get the nomination in this game. And I think a lot of focus has gone into this week and, and getting the possession and getting all all the all the positives out of their, their set pieces. So expect a lot of things from them. So we're gonna head down now to the field for the national anthem of Uganda. Now time for the Namibia National Anthem. A very special moment for all the players on the field to sing the national anthem 
especially for the Namibian team singing it in front of their home crowd. The referee for today, Twengile Jadaswene, the man from South Africa, who will be taking the whistle and he'll be assisted by Precious Pazani from Zimbabwe and Sauda Adiru from Uganda, the two assistant referees recently in action in the Africa Women's Sevens that took place in Botswana. What a special moment for both of these teams, standing in front of their, their countries and singing their national anthems. Everyone can be really proud to just get to this point, so expecting a lot of fireworks throughout this match. When these sides met last year, it was over in Kampala in Uganda. On that occasion, Namibia running out quite comfortable victors. But this year, as we said earlier, there's a lot more at stake. It's not just the trophy that these teams are playing for. It is an opportunity to go to the World Cup. And that really is a cha game changer for these countries and for the players as well. As you saw earlier today, there was a, quite an upset over in Harare as Zimbabwe and Morocco played to a 23-23 draw. So just remember that you can catch all the action on Quest Sports, all the Rugby Africa Gold Cup action. It's gotten off to a great start and I'm sure that we will be in for another thrilling encounter between these two teams as well. In picture there, Ruan Kitsov, he, last year he led out the side. This year he has to settle for a spot on the bench, but uh, definitely looking to make an impact off the bench if he gets his opportunity later on this year. Jock, starting off, where do you think this game is going to be won or lost? Um, like I said earlier, I think the pack of forwards and, and, and the structure of the game, I think Namibia play with a well-structured game and they... they put a lot of effort in, into the whole planning out of what areas they're going to play in um, and how how they can out 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 almost like a like a bow collector like just kind of struggle the teams and strangle them and take all the energy out of them and um, like most African sides they like to run the ball and, and, and it can be a, get a bit wild and and you do make them a lot of mistakes if you if the passes don't go to hand and I think they'll try and capitalize on that and, um, but it's always great to see African rugby, so many young talents um, coming out and coming through the system and the boys want to play, you know, you can see everybody's excited, throw the ball around, maybe not, uh, maybe not as much structure as, as, as you'd like, but that's all things that can Especially grow in the future. Definitely lots of talent on display on the field here as we wait for the whistle from Tungile Jadaswene. It will be James Ejongats in the number 10 jersey to get us underway. And for these two teams, their Rugby Africa Gold Cup campaigns have begun immediately. It's Namibia who leaves the ball forward in the contact and it hands an opportunity for Uganda to have some ball in hand deep inside the half of uh, the Namibian side. And a disappointing start for the home team. Uh, it always, it's, it's a good idea to try and settle the nerves early to win that kickoff from the start yeah it is but on the positive point for Uganda that's brilliant you, you got the okay. kickoff and straight away you get the ball back and you have the opportunity to attack Namibia and Namibia were disappointed with that but they've got the opportunity this scrum to correct that two very strong four Crouch. packs that we will see here today for Uganda Five. it's Sol Kivumbu Asuman Mugarwa the Six. two front uh, props for Uganda and then Johannes Kutsi and Kasper Vivia for Namibia as Aaron of four with feeds. The movie getting the first positive out that scrum and straight away hit back. Uh, the back, back line players will be very proud of the forwards. Just give him a little tap and say, well done boys, you got the ball back for us. And this is interesting from the Namibian side. Opting not to throw the ball around, opting to go for that peak up and under, but it's been well dealt with by Aaron of Foyworth, and he hits a gap early on as well. Decides to put a little chip kick through, he managed to turn around PJ van Lul, but eventually JC Greling is there in possession, and he gets picks up the ball up, but he stepped out into touch, so a very promising start this for the visitors. And that's the danger. If you do kick the ball away, you've got to make sure you're in the line, you're defending well, everybody's connected in that line speed. And just a moment of lapse of concentration, a brilliant break by the Ugandan player and puts them in a great position. Good line out one as well by Uganda and a real opportunity for, him here, for them here early in this half inside the 22 meter area of Namibia. But you see the strong work at the breakdown by the Namibians of four with uh, not quite focusing there, letting the ball go. It's picked up now by Ian Munyani back in his own half. Trying to break through the defense, brought to ground by Ruan Ludic. Foyworth decides to go for the long pass into the hands of James Odongo. Now picked up by Sebuliba. 
into the hands of Odongo. It goes again. Good little run by Odongo, but well tackled by Johan Kreiling. Stepping by James Ijonkat now. No way through there. Uganda keeping it close for the moment. Still available for the men in black. Aaron Ofoy with opting to go blind. Long pass over into the hands of James Odongo again, but a strong tackle on him. That's where Namibia can be very dangerous. Again, that's uh, Uganda opting to use their forwards to try and drive this ball forward. A long pass, not dealt with by Ireth Mukwama. And now uh, the ball will be available for the Namibian side inside the Ugandan half. Yeah, great couple of hits by the captain, Johan Dysel. Gets that first, first big hit in and then gets straight back up on his feet and makes another tackle. And you can see from there, the guys feeding off that energy straight away. The guys are getting off the line and following their captain and a good good result for Namibia. And now inside the Ugandan, almost inside their 22, just outside the 22 with a great attacking opp opportunity. First scrum now for Namibia with Eugene Yankees. We often see him in the number 10 jersey, this time in the number nine jersey. We'll be putting the ball into the scrum and let's see how Johannes Kutsia and Kasper Vivier go against Kuvumbi and Mugerwa. Johan, I think you can expect the Namibian forwards to, to stamp the authority in this one. I think the boys will get this first scrum, this first attacking scrum, and try to, to impose himself the in this Ugandan pack of forwards. Don't lean in. I need the gap. The no front row engaged. of uh, Namibia, very, very experienced. Could see it playing for the Cheetahs in the Pro 14. He's also played in France a little bit. And then Casper Rivier, also Crouch. plenty of experience playing over in France. Bye. So again, it's Yankees to feed. This time Uganda managed to hold it up for the moment, but uh, Namibia moving forward. Yankees opting to go blind into the hands of Leslie Klim. Klim breaks through the first tackle, makes his way into the 22 before he's brought to ground. Yankees now waiting to dig this ball out, and the referee... Breaking up play, there's an injury there to one of the Ugandan players. Let's hope that's not too serious, but that's good officiating from Tungile Jaraswini. That's right, Johan. Safety first. I think the player, the, the tackling player, might have just got his head in the wrong side of that tackle. And a strong carry by Leslie Klim, who's been really impressive for Namibia. Just recently signed a new deal in Ospreys in, in Wales. Uh, definitely a player to watch out for the future, but great to see the, the, the medical staff straight away on the pitch and looking after the injured player. This is Klim going into contact and then it looks like just making contact there with the knee and it's Lawrence Sibolivia in the number 11 jersey. Let's hope that he's all right, but that will definitely be, he'll definitely have to go off for a concussion test and I think that might also be the end of his game. Yeah, such a tough thing to do. You see the player lining up and you line him up, you want to make a, a good offensive tackle. And then the player just steps inside at the last minute and your head is in the wrong position and you get caught. But um, they'll look after him well, make sure he gets off the pitch and go through all the, all the tests and everything and make sure he's uh, ready to play. And if not, look after him off the pitch. But uh, good start for Namibia. I think off that scrum, that's exactly what they wanted. Got some good go forward ball. And uh, this break and play will, will not do any of the sides very well, but hopefully the game will get on the way soon. So there will be a change. It will be Adrian Casito making his way on for Lawrence Sibuliba. It's a blow for Uganda because Sibuliba did play at that recent Commonwealth Games in Australia. A very, very good player and a, a player that if he's given some, some space, he's really able to, to make you pay. He's got a lot of speed out wide. So it's a blow for Uganda, but a very suitable replacement in the form of Adrian Casito, also one of the seven specialists. So almost a like-for-like like replacement for the rugby cranes. So we've already seen the first upset of the Rugby Africa Gold Cup. Remember, you can watch all this action live on Quesa Sports next weekend. Namibia will be back here in Vintuk as they host Tunisia, while Kenya Ag will get their campaign underway as they pay a visit to Morocco. So Lawrence Sibuliba is being clapped off and uh, we really do hope that he is all right and that we will see him on the field in the not too distant future. But that's never nice to see on a rugby field day, eh, Jock. 
No, it's not nice, especially it's one of your teammates. Uh, it's, uh, it's a tough thing to see. You have to carry on with the match, you know, the job goes on. But he's in good hands and I'm sure they look after him really well and hopefully, like you said, nothing too serious. Now we'll get to see what Namibia can do with their first great attacking line out. They did bring in uh, Wanivi and immediately receives the ball, brought him back for this gold cup and trying to get that rolling ball going is Namibia and it looks very promising at the moment for the home side eventually it is brought to ground Eugene Yankees gets it out into the hands of De La Harp and into the hands of the captain but perhaps it's gone forward there's still advantage that has been played by Jadaswini oh great drive from the Namibian forwards exactly what they wanted get themselves into this game and then Daisel just couldn't hang on to the ball De La Harp went a nice drift and Daisel went on the short ball but just couldn't hang on to it but again Namibia on a great attacking opportunity through the gap he just had to hold on to it but uh, wasn't able to and no surprise is what Namibia will try and go for yeah again or this time it's Messi at the line out in Uganda managed to steal it and John Duncan coach of Uganda will Breathe a sigh of relief as they find touch on this near side as well, and that's a good clearance kick from Uganda. Very good exit. I think everything, obviously Namibia making the mistake there, they were very disappointed, but after that, Uganda kept their composure, got their blockers in line, and a great kick from the 10 to put them out um, outside their 22, and Namibia will have to do some work to get back into attacking phases. Robert Mulkier. Played a lot of games off the bench last season. This time it looks like he might be the preferred hooker for Namibia. And quickly taken out at the back by Vian Conradi. And a good dummy throw. And he's got some good speed as well. Eventually goes to ground just short of the five meter line. Now Namibia into the hands of PJ van Lille. Picked up by Yankees again. Into the hands of the big Yanku Fenter. He drives his way over the try line. And that's the first points of the match for Namibia. It's an opening score for Yanku Fenter. And it's Namibia in the lead, 5-0 with the conversion to come. Yeah, good start for Namibia. That's what they wanted. Good hard running, earning the right to play wide. And this time they didn't even know they didn't even need to go wide because the players carrying, carried hard, were nice and direct. Make sure they got quick ball and it's very hard to defend. And eventually Uganda just couldn't get enough numbers and couldn't get a good offensive hit in and the big strong Yanku Fenta gets over the line for the Namibia's first five-pointer. Terrific uh, strength from Yanku Fenter as he bullies his way over the try line. He recently signed for the Jersey Reds in the UK and uh, now an opportunity as well to represent his country. So Cliven Loebscher opting to go for the unorthodox drop kick. And it's Namibia in the lead, 7-0 over Uganda and definitely the signs are there that Namibia want to speed up this game a little bit again a mistake for Namibia from the restart and it hands possession back to this Ugandan side and the same result as it was from the kickoff a scrum for Uganda just outside the Namibian 22 yeah how many times do you see this and coaches talk about this thing so much straight after you scored you have to be extremely concentrated and you have to focus because that you're at your most vulnerable at that stage and again we see namibia making the same mistake they did from the first kickoff uganda looking to step up at scrum time here with their back line lined up on the left hand side or in the forward again waiting to feed Foyworth manages to get the ball out into the hands of Ijongat and then taken into contact by Pius again and loses the ball forward in the contact situation. A couple of handling mistakes here from both teams early on. So we will go back for the earlier knock from the Ugandan side. Well, a good scrum from the Ugandan forwards, you know, get, get, got their uh, backline players a great opportunity to attack. Unfortunately, couldn't hang on to that one, but they'll be They'll feel good about that one. Gives them a nice platform to play off. And um, it'd be interesting to see if they can keep it the full full 80 minutes. But from, for the beginning, they'll be happy and just giving them some platform to play off. Coach. Boy. James. Okay, gentlemen. OK. 
Okay. Okay, okay, okay. We had an agreement that we're going to keep the space. So many things going on if in that scrum. Space, Everybody trying to get the advantage over the opponent. A lot of okay, tricks, okay. and the referee's got a lot on his hands to, to look out for. Not the easiest job in the world. Yeah, and that's good from Jadis. I mean, he just early on breaking the players up and saying, uh, I'm in control here. You need to follow my orders. And uh, this gives them an opportunity to, if they don't, then uh, he's able to, to penalize one of these two teams. And the penalty going the way of Namibia, I think it was Twengile getting the call from the assistant referee on the far side. Uganda just losing their bind on that scrum and therefore the scrum collapsing. It's just confirmation that Lawrence Sibuliba does have a concussion and he will not be returning to the field after not passing the concussion test. So Uganda will be worried about those scrums, but it's available now for this Namibian side. Well secured from the line out as Yankees waits to get the ball out. He hands it away to the big Ruan Ludic. Yankees again opting to go to the back line now. De La Harp into the hands of Cassandra Buerta and his 50th test back into the hands of De La Harp. Last minute tackle there, and it's uh, Janku Fenter who's not able to hold on to the ball. It looks like it might have come off his foot. So the referee has allowed play to continue. It. This one will not find touch into the hands of Clement Lopesha. A very lethal stepper, opting to pass the ball rather this time into the hands of Leslie Klim. Players available down that left hand side now for this Namibian side. Vian Conradi throwing the dummy, brought to ground just short. Klim going into play scrum off, but eventually he's sucked into that ruck. And Uganda, it looks like they've managed to steal the ball. Aaron of Foyworth opting to go for the kick, but he was going to be charged down. And that was a good last-minute defense by this Ugandan side. Ijonkat now opting to find touch, or looking to find touch, doesn't find touch. Into the hands of Krasanda Buerta it goes. Gets the pass away to Leslie Klim. Klim now looking to take on the defense, and that's a wayward pass. Yanku Fence are not able to get his hands to it. And not a good end result for the Namibian side. Yeah, and a nice couple of good, strong carries from Vian Conradi. And unfortunately, he had a two on one there. Just needed to draw that last defender, get the pass out wide. And Namibia would have walked in for an easy try. But credit to Uganda, good scrambling defense, getting back and making that tackle and exiting. But Yuan, they'll have to kick the ball out. I think they're giving Namibia too many opportunities to attack from the back. And they've got a very dangerous back three who can make them pay. Yeah, James Jongkat, he missed a recent Algon Cup game against Kenya, been brought back into the side for the Gold Cup by coach John Duncan. We're seeing a little bit of attention there. And Uganda, a team that's really improved a lot over the last few years, especially their sevens game. They recently won the Rugby Africa men's sevens tournament. So a lot of these players able to play 15s and play sevens as well. Long throw secured nicely by Brian Asaba and then Ofoi with opting to kick the ball downfield. Klim waiting for it and Klim secures. Klim with that step of his gets past the first defender, not past the second. Jan Konradi now with a good offload to Robert Norkia as well. Now space available for this Namibian side. Perhaps a better option would have been to go down that left hand side, but it's Ruan Ludic who takes the ball into contact. Yankees out to Lobscher into the hands of Kreling. Kreling gets the pass away, and this could be the second try for Namibia. It's JC Kreling who goes over. Beautiful play by the Namibian team. Nice interplay, offloading, getting the arms through the tackle, making sure the ball stays alive, not throwing that 50 50. It's all going to hand, and then eventually just got that overlap on the blind side. Uganda ran out of out of players and JC Khalen goes out in the, uh, over in the corner. JC Khalen also very comfortable in the number 12 and 13 jersey, this time being selected at 11. And JC Khalen with the good round off in that left hand corner. And this was good work by the Namibian side. Just getting it through the hands, get the overlap and then a good step by JC Khalen as he gets past Adrian Casito. Yeah, good start. There's a lot of space out wide early on in the game. Uganda will be worried about that, but 
there's a lot, a lot of time to get everything fixed and the boys will be behind the post and maybe just sorting a couple of defensive areas out on that on that blind side especially get get your heads up get players across at the right time make sure you you, you do get enough defenders out on that blind side defend but a good start for Namibia nonetheless and they'll be extremely happy with how things have gone so far Lopesher with a good connection and that's a great kick from the left hand touchline Cliven Lopesher adds the extras and it takes Namibia into a 14-0 advantage after only 15 minutes. And this, the dream start for the defending champions. Nicely through the hands. Simple work from the captain, Johan Dessel, to his left winger, JC Kreling. And he just had one to beat and a great round off as well. This kickoff will be vital for Namibia. This time Uganda just kicks it slightly too deep, maybe, and a good carry there by JC Fellinger. That's what you've got to be look, look out for the, for this Ugandan team. Just speeding up the play, and now good op attacking opportunity here again. Yeah, taking the ball quickly from the line out, but then losing it again as Klim bounces on it. And uh, looks like he might have held on a little bit too long. And, uh, that is when he's saying Leslie Klim there, the man that is penalized. And now it's decision time for the Uganda captain, Asiman Mugerwa. And it looks like they might be going for the posts and uh, perhaps just to settle the Uganda nerves a little bit. Yeah, the right decision from Uganda. Just get yourselves on that scoreboard. Just start building that innings. Maybe get the six, get the nine. And then you can start looking at scoring a couple of tries and they'll be right back into this game. But that's again the kickoff in Namibia did really well initially and then just going to touch and you get us straight away on attack and an opportunity here to get themselves on the scoreboard. Aaron Ofoe with the man that will be kicking to goal for this Ugandan side in the number nine jersey. One of about four or five players that started against Namibia in 2017 in that game in Kampala. We saw him slot a few of these during his warm-ups, and this time that's not a good connection at all. And into the hands of the captain of Namibia, gets a pass away to Eugene Yankees. Yankees with a good offload to Daryl De La Harp. And Namibia right back on the attack inside the half of Uganda. Yankees now gets it away to Ludic and a good pass into Wanivi. This is a good play by this Namibian side. All the forwards getting involved. Wilbert Norkia taking the ball into the 22. Wanivi picks the ball up into the hands of the captain. Again, it goes Johan Dessel. Wanivi taking the ball into contact this time for Namibia. Good defense again from Uganda. Again, the player just a little bit late at that breakdown of that ruck. A little slow to clean out. And Ugandan players straight on it and get the turn on of over for his side. But Namibia look extremely dangerous with ball in hand. And Uganda will be worried with that. Hit by black one over the horizontal garden on his back. So number one black. Late tackle on a Namibian player. Right, so that was off black. It happened behind my back. Through the horizontal, guy land on his side, talking yellow card. All right. Number one, please. So this will be danger for Uganda. Captain. Okay, we're it's the situation last of thing they play. need right I'm now, have to losing the penalty. a player to the bin. Right. Your player, after the ball is gone, okay. continued to play. He lifted the player through the horizontal and dropped him. Therefore, that's a yellow card. So Saul Kavumbi, the man that will spend 10 minutes in the Sunbin. And Uganda really can't afford to be playing with 14 players against a dominant Namibian side at the moment, especially after they were awarded a penalty just a short while ago. Yeah, Saul Kavimbi will be very disappointed with that. Just letting his teammates down a little bit. And just going to make the things a little bit harder. And maybe with a, again, opportunity to put this ball out in the corner and get that pack of fours rolling and see if they can get that push over try. Yeah, no need at this stage for Namibia to go for the threes, especially with that one player advantage. And Kavimbi will have to spend some time in the Simbin. Give them numbers. And this is the incident. And he did let the pass go and uh, just uh, carried on with that tackle. 
to the horizontal, the referee said. So that is a yellow card, but this looks promising for Namibia yet again from the line out. Excellent driving wall going, and they've managed to work their way over the try line. It's try time again for this Namibian side. Phenomenal work by the defending champions. And they've got three tries on the scoreboard inside the first 20 minutes, and it's Robert Norkia. Well worked by the Namibian side. Got that ball down, Janko Fente. The setup was brilliant. Number and the seven. Ugandan side just giving them seven. too much time to get that mall set. And once that mall is set, it's extremely hard to stop. And it may be over for another try. See, Chui Uenibi working hard in the front there, making sure he fights and gets through that contact point, making it easier for his player at the back. And it's over Korea. Yeah. We started this game off really well, who finishes that try. Well done, young man. Klubben Loebscher with his third conversion attempt of the day, this time a little bit easier than the previous one. 15 minutes in from the far side touchline. And Klubben Loebscher definitely has a very, very bright future ahead of him. We saw him last year for the first time in the Gold Cup making his debut for Namibia and since then he's managed to take control of that number 10 jersey and a player with a lot of potential he certainly does have all the skills with a successful conversion there again very good attacking player and even Namibia are blessed now with two very good fly-offs you look at Pivis Tenkamp on the bench also a great young fly-off so promising for the Namibian side, having two youngsters coming through and both looking extremely good. But Cliff and Lobsha just looking really, really, really slick today. And John got this time with a better restart. And again, it's Uganda who managed to get control of the ball after the restart. Definitely a part of the game that they've worked a lot on over the past few months. Now Uganda with ball in hand into the hands of Pius Ogena taking on the defense. But so far everything that the Uganda and attack is throwing at the defense, Namibia holding firm. A little bit indecisive there from Ian Munyani. Good line speed there for Namibian's team. Just cutting off that last pass, but Uganda keeping the ball well. Now they're looking to the forwards, carry it up, the ball goes out the back. And just unfortunately, that little switch back on the inside, maybe not expecting that, and it'll be a scrum down from the Namibian team. Do you think it's nerves for this Ugandan side? They've really looked out of sorts in the first uh, 21 minutes of this game. Yeah, I think all these guys will be extremely nervous. You know, they're playing against the current champions and uh, the team who's played in the previous World Cup and probably one of the favourites to, to win this tournament. So they'll be extremely nervous and but also there'll be a great learning curve for them you know from from this game um, you make a lot of mistakes but there'll be some good stuff throughout the game where you can take into the rest of the tournament so i'm sure these guys the nerves will settle down as this game goes on just saw a forced sub there colin skimboa making his way onto the field of course that's because uh saul kavumbi is on the sinbin and uh, the scapegoat arthur mukama forced to go and spend some time on the sideline. Just the front rows. Just need the front rows. Okay, gentlemen, listen. We can't have this all day, right? I stand that side, something happens this side. I come this side, something happens on the other side, right? We need to get it right. If we don't get it right, I'm going to... So, Kavumbi and Mukama, they're the sitting next to each other. wonder how that conversation is going. Mukama right. saying, I could have still been out there if you didn't, if you didn't make that tackle. Yeah, he doesn't look happy, but... <laughs> That's the way the game goes, and that's the rules. They needed to take somebody off. There's a little smile, so I'm sure he's fine. I'm sure when they do get back on the pitch, they'll, they'll make amends for their mistakes, or the one man's mistake. Crouch. Namibia with the scrum in the middle of the field. Backline lined up left and right. Eugene Yankees feeds. Looks like they're going to go to the right-hand side. Yankees, long pass to Cliven Leipzig, back into the hands of Krasander Buerta. And they've again lost at the contact situation. And Jadis Weni getting the call from the assistant referee. Infringement there from Uganda. Hands on the ground, it looks like. 
Good call from the assistant referee there. I think it was just the feet of the Ugandan player and playing in an offside position, running back, and then just maybe a bit accidental, but against the, the, the rules of the game. So good decision from the assistant touch us. So Cliven Lopes so will look to find touch again. And I'm sure we'll see another driving mall for this Namibian side. It almost looks like practice out there for Namibia with the amount of opportunities that they get to play inside the 22 meter area of Uganda. And this is where the infringement comes. Definitely was a hand on the ground there. Over the top for Namibia as Wanami gives chase, but it's going to land for Uganda. And maybe not looking after the ball there. Maybe Yonibi had to dive down and just try to secure that ball, but it is Orbekunye with the overthrow again. Something they need to work on. Good from Uganda there, kicking the ball into touch, but kicking it away from the touchline into the crowd so Namibia can't feed that ball quickly and get back into play forces them to slow things down and eats a little bit of time with that guy in the sin bin Nokia now looking to make amends this time he finds his man but it's Yanku Fenter who's not able to hold on to the ball so Foywith gets it out a long pass over the top and the referee saying no advantage there so we will go back for the scrum The one at orbit gets correct, gets right, and uh, fortunately gets knocked on by one of the locks, or Yanko Fenter, I should say, number seven. It'll be a scrum for Uganda. I don't know if they want this scrum. They've got one man down. It looks like they might put one back into that scrum, try to secure that ball. Crouch. Five. Set. Early shoving there from Namibia before that ball was put in. And that's a good tactic that's used by Aaron Afoyworth as well, seeing that the Namibians were looking to move forward. So just holding on to the ball a little bit. And Afoyworth this time with a quick tap and then the big up and under will be testing Leslie Klim. And Klim takes it very comfortably in the air. There's a lot of space out wide if Namibia do decide to move it out. And I'm sure they do. And now they've got the ball in the Clifford Lopes with a power side wide. John Jan Dysel. Now it's a two-on-one. JC Krelling the outside. From black. Ball goes loose and it'll kick through. A very good end result there for the Namibian side. Opting to run the ball. As you said, there was space out left and uh, it will be a Uganda thrown at the line out but Namibia will be looking to to contest and will be looking to put a lot of pressure on this Namibian line out Uganda just need to make sure everybody's on the same page they they got the free kick at the scrum it was a up and under a bomb and uh, doesn't look like everybody knew what what it was going to be because the chase wasn't strong enough and you know the counter-attack of the Namibian team is extremely dangerous so they have to make sure everybody's on that same page make sure boys Get in line, it's going to be a bomb. We've got to get a good chase and a good line of defense. Paul Sekate goes long over the top into the hands of Charles Uhuru, one of the experienced players in this Ugandan forward pack. Good option, shorting that line, just shorting it out, and that overthrow leaves that guy open to just carry it up and uh, give them a good exiting opportunity. Uganda not finding touch out. Krasander Buerta now with an opportunity. He's brought to ground. Yankees gets the ball out into the hands of Vian Conradi. Conradi with the strong run. Nice little offload to Yankees. Then to Lopesha into the hands of Delahart. A long pass into the hands of the captain, Juan Dasel. Manages to get the offload away, but it's into the hands of Pius Ogena. And Uganda with their scrambling defense somehow managing to hold Namibia out for now. But Namibia looking extremely dangerous every time they go on the attack. Yeah, good work from Cliff and Lopesha working back, seeing that turnover. And now he's got the ball in hands. His danger's got a good step. Decides to pass it out to Krizanda Voto, decides to carry it up. 
Lopesha into play, scrum off, gets the pass away to Yankees, and now to the big Kasper of the year, manages to get the offload away to Daisel and into Van Lil, a nice pass into the hands of Janku Pentel as well. Just had the one man to beat, he wasn't holding the tackle, so he continued playing, he gets the pass away to his captain, and it's Johan Daisel who goes over for try number four for Namibia. Good work from the big, da the big boys down the touchline, first PJ Van Lil, then to Janku Fenter, carry it up strong, and everybody ready for that little offload. But look at Kasper, he'll be very happy with that offload, the big prop, getting his hands through and putting the ball, ball away to, to the bigger, faster guys out wide. And a good finish from Jan Dijssel. Yeah, that was good work from Janku Fenter. He was brought to ground, but he wasn't held in the tackle, so he managed to get back on his feet and he got the offload away. And the skipper, first time leading out this national side, getting a try as well, leading from the front is Johan Dessel. Made his debut back in 2013. You played with him at the 2015 Rugby World Cup. He managed to score a try against New Zealand, and uh, that just shows the quality of the man. No, he's a great player, and like I said, he's a very calm player. He makes good decisions, and defensively, He's the leader in the back line. He takes the guys up. He likes making those big hits, and, and that just gets those positives on positives. So great guy to have in the team to keep that everybody calm, the youngsters, keep them all under control and, and make sure that they know exactly what's going on. And great for, to see the guy scoring a try. Clement Lopesha this time with the kick from the right hand side of the field and he pushes it away to the right so the score remains Namibia 26 Uganda 0 and somehow Uganda have to pick themselves up from uh, con after conceding those early four tries but this is again it was good work from the forwards everybody involved there big number eight gets the pass away good work from Janku Fenter as well and uh, Johan Dessel just staying in support rounding off a nice worked team try. Now the area where Uganda's got the ball back every time and Namibia's not been so sharp as this kickoff. Let's see what they do from this one. Oh, this time Namibia managed to secure it nicely through Ruan Ludic. So Uganda have been restored to their 15 players as Sol Kivumbi makes his way back onto the field. Now Namibia with a change of tactic, opting to put it high and putting a lot of pressure is JC Grayling and he forces Uganda to lose the ball as well, but they've lost it backwards. And now Namibia have managed to turn it over. Again, a good offload from Kasper Vivia. This is good work by this Namibian side. Yankees to Norkia to De La Harp and then the long pass over to the captain Johan Dessel showing his footwork as well and the referee saying that there was a knock on I thought uh, Johan Dessel might have watched a little bit of soccer last night opting to go with the boots instead of trying to pick it up yeah he watched a lot of it I don't think he took too much in there couldn't control that one but it wasn't a great pass and unfortunately just losing the ball for it was a good attacking opportunity Uganda again a little bit short on this side could have been in, potentially been really dangerous but they do have the ball back now and they'll need a positive soon just to kind of get everybody's heads lifted up and get that positive vibes going Crouch. Crouch. Five. Six. <laughs> Again, it's a four worth of feeds, and this time much steadier from Uganda since they've been restored to their eight forwards in that forward pack. It's been taken into contact there by Pius Ogena. Looking a little bit more promising for this Ugandan side. Now perhaps a play available down the right-hand side. They managed to spread it wide. The first time real opportunity that we're seeing for this Namib uh, the Ugandan players down the wings. And the penalty has been awarded to Uganda. And now decision time again for the captain. Asiman Mugerwa. Yeah, lovely flat pass out wide and just the pass just beating the, the, that last defender and showing a little bit of pace but gets dragged in. And unfortunately, the tackle slightly high around the neck area. And we know World Rugby is really, really Hello. strict on that these days. So, got to make sure you get your tackles down and make legal tackles. 
You heard in the ref mic there, Jealous Wedi saying it's a seat belt tackle. And as you said, uh, World Rugby definitely very strict on the high tackles and anything that cause, can cause harm to the, the players. But now Uganda back inside the 22 of Namibia. And the penalty again coming the way of the Ugandan side. PJ Van Lul, the man being penalized for being offsides. And it's Uganda. We want to get rid of that zero next to that na their name. And an opportunity now for them to add the three points. Yeah, I think when you're 26 nil down, maybe the right decision there is to kick to the corner and, and just gonna just kind of have a shot. You know, you I know you want to get on that scoreboard, but if you want to have a realistic chance of getting back in this game, you need to score a try. So um, but this three points going into half time almost. About six minutes left before in, we're into half time. Make sure that they they get that points on the board and that zero will 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 fade away and they'll feel a much better about about the way the game has gone and hopefully build on that. James Ijonga taking over the kicking duties from Aaron Ofoyworth for Uganda. And it's a much better connection and it's over as well. So Uganda finally on the scoreboard. It took them 34 and a half minutes, but they've managed to break the duck. But still, it's Namibia leading 26-3 as we head into the final five minutes of this first half. The experience, Peter Jan van Lille bossing the boys around. Namibia will want this back off the kickoff. Make sure they get a good chase, put a lot of pressure on this Ugandan side. And hopefully get the ball back for a good attacking opportunity again. Kevin Lopesher it is with the restart. Again, very, very good pressure from Namibia, forcing the knock-on. And a very, very good attacking opportunity again for Namibia. On the 22-meter line, on the left-hand side, we'll see the back line lined up on the right-hand side here. But just taking his uh, eyes off the ball was Justin Kimono. Yeah, you hear all the good coaches say the kick is always also only as good as the chases and JC Grayling there putting a lot of pressure on the Ugandan player just looked up at that last minute saw the guy coming at him and unfortunately just lost it forward see if Namibia now up to go for a train backline move they've got their line up the backline lined up on the right hand side Lopesher, Dillahup and Daisel with uh, JC Grayling involved there as well it goes to Lopesher, gets it on the inside to Grayling and then he gets the pass away to Johan Dessel. Not quite sure if that was forward or not, but the referee happy for play to continue. Then Uganda making their way back, definitely in an offside position there. But the referee has allowed play to continue, and it looks like it's going to be Yankees trying to take it quickly. But uh, eventually just uh, settling down, and now decision time right in front of the poles. Particular. Scrum. Scrum. Yeah, good decision by Namibia there. Perfect attacking, attacking opportunity in the middle of the pitch. Oh, that pass could slightly have drifted forward, but referee let it go, and probably the right thing that the try wasn't scored. Unfortunately, Uganda, an offside position, not falling back behind the, 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 the defending players' line and giving the scrum away. And a middle field scrum, like I said, both sides to attack. Namibia will be very comfortable with this, and I think Uganda We'll have a tough time to stop this one. Crouch. Five. Sit. Yankees feeds. Good scrum from Namibia moving closer and closer to the try line. The arm from the referee does go out. There will be an advantage. No advantage, says the referee. And probably see a, a scrum again being selected by Namibia again the right decision you know it's a couple of minutes before half time just wear them down in this scrum the scrum's been going really well keep the ball in there and the other thing that can get into the equation if there's a lot of penalties that's been given away the scrum time there has been a yellow card there already and maybe look to to force them into another one and that'll really going into the half time for Namibia that'll be a very positive 
positive outlook on the second half and not so good for Uganda. So Uganda will try and keep them out in this one. Crunch. Five. Six. Again, the scrum collapsing here on the near side. And this is very difficult for a forward pack. You're coming up against a team that's maybe a little bit stronger, scrumming better than you. How much can you change in a situation like this, Jack, when you are put under pressure at scrum time? It is tough, you know, you got your, your whole setup and everything worked up before that, but, but the experienced players do have a lot of tricks up their sleeve and the, the important thing is the communication, you know, get together quickly and say, listen, Crouch. things are a bit frantic, we're not doing well, maybe change this and that and uh, maybe get some technique changes and try to get a positive out of the scrum because at the moment they may be dominating this part of the game. Much better this time from Uganda and Yankees asked to use it. Scrum uh, will be the way of uh, Namibia. Aaron Afoy with getting his hand involved there. So much better defensive effort from Uganda. But unfortunately for them, it only results in another scrum for Namibia. And that one, that was just hard, you know. That's the boys obviously didn't like what happened in the previous scrum. And the forwards came together and said, listen, let's not let them push us back like they want to. Let's put up a good fight in this scrum. And a great scrum for Uganda. Namibia not getting any go forward there. And unfortunately, the knock-on does give the ball back to Namibia again. Crouch! Aaron Afoyworth has been a busy man for Uganda, been all over the park as the scrum off usually is, but been getting involved, trying to lift his team spirits. This time also a good scrum from Uganda. Now it goes to Yankees, gets the pass away to Locher, long pass over the top. Leslie Klim not able to get his hands to it. And it will go out into touch as we head into the final few seconds here of this first half and there's the halftime hooter so this is the final play and Uganda probably will just look to get this ball out as quickly as possible and go into the halftime sheds and perhaps they need an inspirational team talk from their coach John Duncan a couple of times we've seen Namibia just missing that last pass maybe just forcing the forcing the issue a little bit and just try to keep a little bit tighter but Uganda did well to keep out Namibia there and they'll be happy not to concede a try early before half time and look to rebuild in the second half. But the first half, it's been all about Namibia leading 26-3 at half time. Uganda with it all to do in the final 40 minutes if they want to avoid a defeat in their first game of the 2018 Rugby Africa Gold Cup. And firstly, the coach will have to lift the team's spirits as they will be feeling out and defeated already. But the halftime score here in Vintuk, it's Namibia in the lead against Uganda. The halftime score, Namibia 26, Uganda 3.